How are we doing, people? I hope you're all having a good week. I figured, seeing as the next couple of weeks in boxing seem to be a bit dry until we get to the end of September, I thought I'd get back on the studies. And for those who don't know, I've covered, I've done a couple of studies on the channel right now, like these kind of commentary-based ones. And I think the two main ones I did were based on punching mechanics and power generation uh, applied to boxing with Julian Jackson and Nanipo Donner being the points of reference. I also did a bit more of a, a wider uh, study of Anthony Yard in his last fight just to assess where he is at this point in his career, uh, assess his skill set and whatnot. And so I figured that uh, in the lead up to Anthony Joshua versus Alexander Usyk, we could assess Joshua's skill set, or at least part of it, because I believe that the what we're going to cover in this video today, it's going to play a pivotal role in that fight versus Usyk, but also it's something that it, it's, it's going to be good for someone who really wants to immerse themselves in the theory of boxing to, to really try and figure this sport out, because the punching, it's only a slight percentage of it. And I know that sounds counterintuitive because you associate boxing with punching and striking and hitting, but your, think of your punch as your reward for engaging your brain and using good boxing and tactics and technique. And so specifically, we're going to focus on the lead hand of Anthony Joshua. Now, just to clear up some potential, I, I just want to uh, establish a theme. The way I was schooled, because there are different ways of coaching and teaching boxing, but the way I was schooled personally is that your lead hand, regardless of whether it is right or left, is simply the hand that is closest to your opponent. So in your stationary orthodox stance, your left hand will be your lead hand, but you can alter your positioning to make it that your make so that your right hand is your lead hand. And so having that kind of versatile approach really opens up the techniques and the shots and just your arsenal. It really, it basically doubles your arsenal just by acknowledging that. And so that that's just something I want to clear off and it's a theme I want to establish for future videos. But pertaining to Anthony Joshua in this video, the vast majority of it, his lead hand will be his left. But I just, as I say, want to establish that idea. Anyway. Let's get into this first fight. So this is one of Anthony Joshua's earlier fights versus Kevin Johnson. This was back in, I believe, the 30th of May 2015. So his early fight, Joshua's been a pro for less than two years. And this is seen as his first step up. Now, Joshua is going to use his lead hand. And let's analyse how and why he's using it. So if we get into this, and I've slowed all the clips down to like 0.75, so if it looks a bit weird, that's why. Uh, the speed has been altered just to make it easy to, to stop and start. So we see Joshua's come out and he's throwing this jab, and uh, Johnson's kind of parried with his, his right hand, and now he's looking like he's going to circle to the left, his left that is. Now Joshua's tried this, bear with me. Joshua's trying this stepping jab. Uh, I'm not a massive fan of this because it is risky. You don't want to, you want to have it as an option, I guess, but it's not someone I, it's not something I'd use that often. But what Joshua does, he steps with it, can make it easy to get timed over the top of a right hand. But as we see here, Johnson is completely out of position. Even if he did manage to land on Joshua, there'd be very little power and leverage in that shot. Nevertheless, Joshua goes for it. But he see, let's see how Johnson reacts. We can see he's gone for the right hand parry again. Completely out of position, but he's just about managed to get away from that jab. Joshua kind of steps forward. That's his way of a feint. Not the most effective, but I guess it works in this instance. Because once again, see Joshua, uh, the Johnson, he, the Johnson. Who, uh, see Johnson goes to preempt that, uh, that jab raising his right glove slightly. Joshua tries again and goes for a right hand. Doesn't land, but it's besides the point. Uh, see both guys. Okay, Johnson's tried his jab. 
once again, bio biomechanics are a bit off. But Joshua's kind of just faded away from that jab. Not the greatest way of doing it, but nevertheless, he's got away with it. So I guess it's a success. Look what he does next. He ducks. Don't leave things down to chance. Professional fighters leave nothing to chance. If you avoid a, sec uh, a first shot, don't just hope and leave to chance that your opponent doesn't throw another one and you're okay. Move anyway. Be proactive in your, in your defense. Okay, you've avoided the jab. Just in case another one comes afterwards, move away. Just like Joshua's done, so that's good. That's good to see. And that follows, that fits into the theme that we're going to establish throughout this video. And so, uh, Joshua trying to combat this lead hand jab of Kevin Johnson, countering with his own. Okay, so we've got a good close up now. Both guys are in a very similar posture, as you can see here. And you can see they're both preparing to defend against lead hands with their rear hands. And okay, so Joshua's kind of primed here. He's gone into a little bit of a a faint, I'd say. I don't really want to call it fainting because it's it's not it's like active guard slash fainting, but it's just not the most defined. There are the, the positions aren't as defined. But I guess it serves the same purpose. So Joshua's kind of gone in with that that like little faint, that little step and faint, mimicking the jab. And we've seen Johnson's response here to kind of it's like he's he's responding with his own controlling shot. And then we can see Johnson is He's, he's established now. Joshua's now got the pattern. Through using his lead hand, Joshua now has the pattern that he has the intelligence, rather, that Johnson is going to counter his uh, left jab with a rear hand parry. So you see Joshua, he doesn't jab to Johnson's face. He, jump, he jabs to the glove. And this, in the meantime, gets himself into position to load the right hand. And then, as Johnson, we've already established, will counter Joshua's lead hand with his own lead hand. Does so. The pathway is now open for the right hand. Joshua's loaded it even more and then sends it out. Beautiful. Let's see it again. See, just like that. So, just for use of the lead hand, Joshua has managed to establish how Kevin Johnson is going to defend against this manoeuvre as well as counter it and through doing that Joshua is able to add another layer and then learn and tailor a counter for Johnson's counter if that makes sense. So this is what you use the lead hand for. You use these punches, these controlling shots to gauge the reaction of your opponent and then you tailor your attack from there. But this can be made better in many ways but it can be streamlined more. So if we go to, which I think is Joshua's best performance to date, his fight against Andy Ruiz in the rematch, we can see that, and yes, Joshua has massive height and reach advantage, but he was engaging his brain and he took his IQ to a completely new level. So you can see Joshua's controlling the lead hand. He's kind of like, he's maintaining the distance, but he's bridging the gap between himself and Ruiz. Kind of jumping in with a, a jab, I'm not a massive fan of that, but he does it anyway. And so he's engaging the lead hand of Ruiz, and again. And he's trying to gauge that reaction of Ruiz. Ruiz rightly is bridging that gap, he's contesting that space with him, meeting the, the hands in the middle. And so Joshua's really trying to agitate, and I say agitate, inverted commas, really trying to agitate uh, a reaction get a reaction from Ruiz. But Ruiz, he, he's no slouch, he knows what's going on. But then Ruiz bites. And what does he do? He hooks at the extended lead arm of Joshua. Now if you actually go back to the first fight, you can see this happen. There's actually one point where Andy Ruiz full on hooks Joshua's wrist. And, you know, but nothing comes off it. But Joshua, he takes his step back, 
to evade the right hand that Ruiz tried to set up. Because remember, Ruiz hooked the, the lead hand, then he sent out the right hand. Joshua evades that. But now he knows, he has he has the, the intel, he has the data downloaded. So what does he do? He bounces back into range, understands that Ruiz is going to meet the lead hand, just like he did before. And he knows that right hand's there because Ruiz has come out, he's met Joshua halfway, and Joshua, he's tailored that attack. And the trajectory, look at this. Look at the rotation, look at the weight transfer on this right hand, completely just blitzes, it rips through Ruiz's head. Ruiz's got a chin. He's got a chin because this shot, that's going to that's gonna take some heads off. And then we see the effects of it. But also, I think Joshua attempts the left hand. Uh, didn't really set it up that well. But what does he do? He misses, kind of ships a little bit of a counter there. Keeps his, he doesn't just bring his arm back. That's a, I don't want to say it's a mistake, but it's amateurs. I mean, everyone in boxing is taught, bring your hands back. Bring them back to your face. If you've sparred for any length of time, and um, when I say spar, I mean against someone decent, you'll, you'll slowly begin to realise that bringing your hand back before the other person has thrown a punch, it's just not, it's not always a, an option. If anything, it's going to be quite unrealistic. So learn to extend your defense. Because if Joshua, if, say, Andy Ruiz goes for a right hand, that's obstructing it. Uh, but then also Joshua can extend and go for the head control and physically stop his opponent from articulating his weight and generating power. But we get the idea of that. Joshua has engaging, 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 has the details. Bang, knows how he's going to attack. That was in, what, five seconds, maybe more. But that's how quickly, when you engage your brain and you use your tools to gather that data, that's how quickly you can then devise an attack. You can devise a plan of attack, rather. And now we're going to get into some really, really high level stuff, very impressive stuff. So we can see Joshua constantly using the, the the lead hand to keep to control this space but also to extend himself look how much of this space he's taken up that's his space look at the space that andy ruiz has it's like half as much and so we can see them we're kind of battling for position ruiz he's not a slouch remember he knows he knew he was in a disadvantage there so he has to begin extending himself Joshua using the rhythm. Oh, go back a bit further. So out, bang. Using that rhythm, using the lead hand to um, create a rhythm, then break it. Being in control of all the variables. So this is where we get into the good stuff. So, oh, my bad. So Joshua, I don't know if you saw there, but he went right at the middle of a straight shot engaging i think is the right glove of andy ruiz brings it around the side as well because he probably anticipates that ruiz is going to parry a straight shot okay you're going to parry the straight shot i'll take not the shortcut but i'll ambush you around the side and then turn it into a hook instead so he's now got hands on ruiz he's uh as he's moving joshua has now used the left hand to bring his weight backwards what he's going to do now is feint the right hand to manipulate andy ruiz's positioning once again does that and look at this completely out position from andy ruiz and then from here through that right hand he's then loaded the left side and the left side's now the power shot and he goes for the body shot bang now the biomechanics aren't the greatest joshua's kind of compromising his weight shifts because he's moving, but when you dissect the the intelligence behind it, this is high level boxing. And yes, it's against Andy Ruiz, who you know Joshua has quite a few considerable advantages over him. But it's the fact that Anthony Joshua has this IQ and he's exercising it that in itself is an achievement, and from there you develop it. 
you see it again, left hand, right hand faint, boom, just like that. You should notice how it, it flows. He's kind of like, um, I'm, well, actually, I'm just going to straight up say it, he's improvising, but it's not like he's just blagging it. It's it's having the the intelligence and the ring IQ to understand that every move you make is going to have a, uh, you have to chain them together, if that makes sense. And at the same time, you have to find out what your opponent's going to do in uh, retaliation, how they're going to react before you just jump in. You know, imagine if Joshua just kind of stomped forward and went for the, the left hook to the body. The chances of that working are very slim, relatively speaking, because you're not being professional. You're leaving it down to chance. But when you do your due diligence and you collect the data from your opponent through your controlling shots, through your feints, and you manipulate them so you get them in the position where you want, you leave very little to chance and you capitalize and you basically set the table for your punches pretty sure it's teddy atlas who says that you know or it sets the table it's true you set up your punches use your iq use your tools and boxing becomes a whole lot easier it's still flipping hard don't get me wrong but always always have it in mind to be intelligent this is a thinking man's sport so I'm going to leave it there with uh, with this one. I hope, I hope, I hope you understand the themes that I'm trying to cover. And I hope this is insightful as well as entertaining, of course. Um, let me know if, let me know your take on what I've uh, kind of divulged in today. Let's start a discussion. Let's compare our, our thoughts and our schooling and our theory when it comes to boxing. Um, that's what this channel is all about. It's about community. We all love boxing. So let's talk about it. And if you have any recommendations, leave them. I'll see if I can get to them. See if I can make some videos. Other than that, if you could like, comment, subscribe, press the notification bell, all that good stuff is greatly appreciated. Help establish this channel and help it grow. Um, helps me out massively. Thanks for listening and I'll catch you on the next video.